सो हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दी आई नाई रिकॉल ऑफ मे टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री नाउ माई फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन हेयर इज दैट वाई आर वी इवन डूइंग दिस रिकॉल ओके नाउ दिस रिकॉल इज नॉट जस्ट टू टेल यू दैट दिस वॉज द क्वेश्चन दिस इज द आंसर टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट एक बार एग्जाम हॉल से निकलने के बाद तो सारे राइट आंसर अपने आप क्लिक हो जाते हैं राइट सो this is to basically this is to awaken you that the questions which was asked was very basic okay this to this is to awaken you that the questions they were asked they are very basic these were not high five questions now since you have given your neat pg exam okay you have given your ini exam you know the pattern of the question now knowing the pattern of the question is very important because this will tell you that the questions these are basic not high five you just have to stick to your notes just have to stick to your notes make your notes as your bible make your notes as your bible uh, along with the past year questions now this will get you selected in your dream college right so let's start with the recall now i cannot stop smiling looking at this question because this question was discussed by me and shushan sir one month back in the integrated session now what was the question the question was asked is where the nikolsky sign is absent so let's first know where the nikolsky sign is present so it is present in heli heli disease which is also called as familiar benign pemphigus toxic epidermal necrolysis also called as lyle disease and staphylococcal candidate skin syndrome now the question which was asked is where it is absent that is cisatrical and bullous pemphigus see nicole's case we don't see nicole's case sign now what is nicole's case sign when we apply lateral pressure surrounding the vesicle or the bulla a new vesicle or the bulla appears surrounding the vesicle so this is the nikolsky sign now the second question which was asked is about the vesiculo bullous lesion vesiculo bullous lesion and its location now in pemphigus vulgaris what do we see we see supra basilar spread that is above the basement membrane now why do we see uh, supra basilar split in pemphigus vulgaris because here the desmosomes are attacked desmosomes are attacked hemi desmosomes are spared hemi desmosomes these are spared that is why in pemphigus vulgaris we see supra basilar split while in bullous pemphigoid we see sub epidermal or we say below the basement membrane sub basilar split is seen in bullous pemphigoid now here hemidesmosomes are attacked in bullous pemphigoid in bullous pemphigoid in bullous pemphigoid hemidesmosomes are attacked hemi desmosomes are attacked in pemphigus folliculis we see subcorneal blister now the next question that is cleft lip and palate can be seen in all these syndrome except in all these syndrome except that is now see here the question they have mentioned except to so read the question very properly vander wood syndrome vander wood syndrome ka dusra naam hi kya hai cleft lip syndrome cleft lip syndrome pierre robin syndrome mein hame pata hai that is cleft lip and cleft palate is seen chalo i accept that we don't know the popliteal terygium syndrome but we know that in gardener syndrome cleft lip and cleft palate is absent so here the answer is very direct that cleft lip and cleft palate absent in gardener syndrome now vandervoort syndrome it is also called as cleft lip syndrome so here cleft lip or palate which is present along with the pits which are seen in lower lip now here one important question here is that is gene involvement now gene involvement here is that is irf6 and grainy grhl grainy hair like 3g now in your uh, 
past I and I paper, in a past I and I paper, IRF 16 was not mentioned. In place of IRF 16, they had mentioned grainy hair line. So you should remember both the genes associated with Van der Wood syndrome. Now Pierre Robin syndrome, we see micrognathia, cleft palate, micrognathia, that is short mandible, cleft palate along with glossoptosis of tongue. Now identify the anomaly which is shown in the image below. So whenever we see these type of anomalies, two anomalies are very common confusion hota hai, that is gemination hai, ya fusion. Hai. Supernumerary teeth, to, that is a presence of extra tooth. Okay? Odonto, it is a basically a tumor, benign odontogenic tumor. Now what is gemination and fusion? Okay? So let's understand, now this will be very clear to you that when we when there is a germination, what is germination? That is the one tooth bud, it is splitting into two. So when one tooth bud, it splits into two, so there is a formation of two extra tooth, that is N plus one. Fusion, when two tooth bud, it joins, leading to the formation of one large tooth micro, macrodont. So here the total dentition will be one less, that is N minus one. What is N? N is 32. Now here by looking at this image, it is very evident that this is a deciduous dentition. This is a central incisor. Okay. Now here the lateral incisor and canine, it is fused. Okay. Lateral incisor and canine is fused. So here the answer is fusion. Now the condition seen in the image below, okay, is best described as, best describes as. So we know that this is a supernumerary. Tooth. So here the options are supernumerary teeth between two central incisors, composite odontome, complex, so this is rule out. Okay? These are just the tumors. Mesiodense. Okay, now what do we do? First option we will be very happy and we will mark. But remember, when the supernumerary teeth which is present between two central incisors, it is called as mesiodense. So the answer here is mesiodense. Now the structure shown in the image below. See, now from this image, it is evident that this is a newly born child and the tooth which is present in the newly born child, it is called as natal teeth. See, if we see option, we see the deciduous teeth. Newly born child, there is no deciduous teeth. Hota nahi hai. Supernumerary teeth, nahi hai. odontome, it is a tumor. So, the answer is natal teeth. Now, what is confusion in the beach? Mein ho sakta tha? Natal teeth and the neonatal teeth. Now, the natal teeth which is present at the time of the birth, while neonatal teeth, the teeth which erupts within the 30 days of the birth. So this is the difference between the natal and the neonatal teeth. Now consider the following tumors. Odontogenic myxoma, fibroma, granular cell tumor, cementoblastoma. Now which, which of these tumors have origin from the odontogenic mesenchyme? Okay. So now if you know the classification of tumor, Okay, it will be very easy for you to solve this uh, question. Now, let's first understand the classification. Okay, so tumor, tumor, it is classified into benign and malignant. Benign and malignant. So here we will focus on benign odontogenic tumor. So benign odontogenic tumor, it is again divided into three. It is again divided into three. The first one, it has origin only from the epithelial. Epithelial origin. Second is the mixed, that is benign odontogenic tumor origin from the epithelial epithelial plus ectomesenchyme ectomesenchyme that is the dental papillary dental sac and uh, the third one is the benign odontogenic tumor origin only from the ectomesenchyme so here the question which was asked is which of these tumor have origin from the odontogenic mesenchyme. So, agar if we know the tumors which come under this category, this, this question is aram se we can mark. Okay. Now, benign odontogenic tumor which is origin from the odontogenic epithelium includes ameloblastoma. 
squamous odontogenic tumor, edematoid odontogenic tumor, and COT, which is also called as spin box tumor. Okay, this was benign odontogenic tumor from odontogenic epithelium. Coming to the benign odontogenic tumor of mixed category, that is odontogenic epithelium along with odontogenic ectomesenchyme. Now, this includes odontoma. Dentinogenic ghost cell tumor, amyloblastic fibroma, and primordial odontogenic tumor. Now, this is the newly addition. Okay, this is newly added. Now, odontogenic ectomesenchyme with or without odontogenic epithelium, it includes cementoblastoma, odontogenic fibroma, odontogenic myxoma, also called as fibromyxoma, and cementoossifying fibroma. Now, this cementoossifying fibroma, it comes under fibrooseous lesion along with the odontogenic tumor. Okay, so these options were there. Okay, cementoblastoma, odontogenic fibroma, odontogenic myxoma. So, if we know this classification, it will be very easy for us to rule out that is odontogenic myxoma is there, odontogenic fibroma is there, cementoblastoma is there. Okay, cementoblastoma is there, granular cell tumor is not there. Which of these tumor have origin from odontogenic mesenchyme? So the answer is ABT. ABT. A, B, T, C is not there. Now, the next question. A 65 year old patient, okay, had a tumor in the parotid region. Now, which is the tumor seen in the histopathological image? So, we first thought that is a tumor in the parotid gland, we come across the ectopleomorphic adenoma, which is the most common tumor in the parotid gland. The second most common tumor, which is exclusively seen in the parotid gland, is the Watkins tumor, okay. Now, this is the histopath pathology okay so as we can see here there are a lot of blue okay what is this blue this is basically a lymphocyte this is a lymphocyte now see this was the image which was asked okay now this is a lymphocyte so as we know that Watkins tumor Watkins tumor the other name of Watkins tumor is also called as papillary Papillary cyst adenoma, adenoma lymphomatosum, lymphomatosum, okay. So, it is called as papillary cyst adenoma lymphomatosum because cyst adenoma, so it has a cystic, okay, multiple cystic cavities seen in which there are papillary, epithelial papillary projections, okay. Like this, epithelial papillary projections will be seen in which the bottom, the base of this papillary projection, it will have a lot of lymphocyte. It will have a lot of lymphocyte. With this, this is the lumen. Okay, that is why the name has given papillary cyst adenoma lymphomatosum. Now, this is the higher uh, power view of the papillary cyst adenoma lymphomatosum. Now, this is the lumen. Now, this is the epithelial projections. This is the epithelial projection and this is the lymphocyte. This is the lymphocyte. This is the Watkins tumor. This is the Watkins tumor. Lymphoma, okay, adeno lymphoma. Now, why this is adeno lymphoma? Because it gets its origin, because it gets its origin from entrapment. Entrapment of epithelium of salivary glandular tissue, salivary glandular tissue in paraparotid lymph node during the embryological period. This is lymphoma. That is why it is called as adenolymphoma. That Watkins tumor. Now, this Watkins tumor it is most commonly it is most commonly seen in smokers. It is most commonly seen in smokers and male is to female predilection, male is to female ratio is same. Generally in salivary gland tumor, salivary gland uh, pathologies, they are more commonly seen in females. Now this is the only salivary gland pathology which is more commonly seen in, uh, which is seen in both, that is male is to female ratio is same. Okay, so this was the 
the call of the uh, oral pathology so everybody bestest of luck and i would just say that the questions are very basic and just stick to your notes make your notes as a bible and your dream college with your dream branch is waiting for you okay so bestest of luck